Welcome back to the programme. It's been hard to keep up with British politics these days, ever since the shock Brexit vote. There's been an endless series of unexpected drama, resignations, desertions, revolving doors, and it will be all change again tomorrow, perhaps before it all settles down again. Theresa May will officially take over from David Cameron as Prime Minister, but no honeymoon period for her. Brexit will be first, middle and last on her to-do list. And now, all of Europe desperately wants to know when she'll trigger Article 50 and start divorce proceedings. Desperate to lift the heavy burden of uncertainty that's hanging over the entire continent. As my next guest, the French ambassador Gérard Arrault said when he joined me from Washington. Ambassador Arrault, welcome to the program. You have been very expressive on Twitter about your feelings. Tell me why you're so anti-Brexit. Well, because first, I think it was a, a, a feeling of, of sadness. I, I can't imagine Europe without the British, uh, without their capabilities, their abilities, and even be, without their humor. And second, uh, it was an expression of concern, uh, because we are facing everywhere, from the US to France to Scandinavia, an outburst of populism. And uh, uh, there is a real danger that the Brexit could be the first act uh, of the unraveling of the European Union. And that's why uh, uh, we are concerned. And I, I was also sad and, and worried. Because your own country is facing its own potential Frexit, Marine Le Pen, the leader of the National Front, extreme right-wing party, has made no bones about it. She wants to do what the British have done. Is this a real possibility in your country? Well, you know, again, I'm used to say in Washington, D.C., that Trumpism is a transatlantic phenomenon. And the U.K., uh, Trumpism is Brexit, and Le Pen is, in a sense, the French, uh, the French Brexit. So there is a crisis. We are facing a deep crisis all over Europe. Uh, and, and we have to respond uh, to the questions which are raised by our citizens. Because behind Trump, behind Le Pen, behind Brexit, uh, you have legitimate questions raised by, the, by our voters. Well, it is said that Prime Minister Cameron and the establishment here did not respond to those legitimate concerns. And the voters identified uh, what they called uncontrolled immigration into this country as one of their main reasons for voting Brexit. Is your government responding to those very legitimate concerns that you're talking about? Well, I think there are a lot of, of different questions. Uh, immigration being maybe more a symptom uh, the, uh, than, than the, really the crux of the crisis. Uh, the French president uh, will actually travel around Europe in a few days, uh, going to, to some capitals to see what can we do. Uh, it's not a question of more Europe or a sort of bold initiatives. It's simply to try to make our union, which is a complicated uh, uh, mechanism, more responsive to the questions of our citizens. Well, what about the new prime minister in Britain? What do you make of her? She was a Remainer. She said Brexit is Brexit. I just want to know how you, as the French government, feel that these negotiations should proceed? Well, first, Brexit is Brexit. I think uh, we shouldn't be in a sort of state of denial. Whatever we think of it, uh, it would be a mistake to deny the result of a vote. Uh, it would be a democratic uh, mistake. Secondly, the negotiations have been to, per to be conducted as soon as possible. It's not because we want to push the UK outside. It's simply that we want to, to leave the, the, the uncertainty. Uh, uh, which is waiting on, 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 on the European Union. Let's wait uh, the UK uh, government, because first we need to have a UK government, and after that UK has to decide uh, uh, what, uh, what are their goals during, uh, for, for the negotiation. It will be a difficult technical and political uh, uh, negotiation. On the French side, we want to have a very close, very positive relationship with the United Kingdom, while of course respecting the principle the principles of the of the EU. How difficult will it be for the UK to renegotiate all these trade uh, agreements that it has? Oh, it's it's a, it's it's nightmarish. I think the British will have to renegotiate dozens and maybe hundreds of trade agreements, especially in the framework of the World Trade Organization. 
and uh, and you can't imagine uh, how many strong uh, legal links uh, we have uh, between UK and the European Union. So not only the, the UK will have to cut its its links and its ties with the European Union, but it will have to create new ties and new links with all the other countries, uh, ties and links that uh, the UK had uh, so far through the European Union. No, technically, it will be very, very complicated, very, very difficult for the EU and especially for the UK. Do you think the EU has to reform? Do you think that this is also a wake-up call for the EU? Of course. Uh, of course, it's a wake-up call uh, for the EU. But you have also to recognize that the EU is facing, you know, a lot of different crises, and, and most of them are not of its own making. You know, the migration crisis, you know, really, but we have also terrorism. And eventually we have, in a sense, the end of the economic crisis uh, uh, which has come from the U.S. in 2008-2009. Uh, so it's a very challenging time, uh, time for the EU. But so far, EU has always overcome the challenges. So I, I trust that, that we'll do it again. Uh, obviously, France is part of the anti-ISIS coalition. Uh, but you also see what Assad is doing in Syria and how the noose is tightening around Aleppo. Where is this going to go, Ambassador? Because let's face it, the uncontrolled migration and immigration and refugees is a direct result of the unstoppable war in Syria. No, exactly. Uh, and uh, uh, so it's not only a humanitarian tragedy in Syria, but it has also a very direct consequences, political consequences on the European Union. You know, right now, the Secretary of State, John Kerry, is in Moscow, and, and, and we do hope that he will succeed to convince uh, uh, the Russians uh, to engage into real uh, negotiations about the political transition. Because for the moment, uh, uh, the obstacle uh, comes very clearly from, from, Assad, uh, from Assad himself. I mean, it's been months since President Putin announced at the UN that, you know, they were going to get involved, and it's the same old, same old. No ceasefire, no political transition. No, you're right. Uh, you know, it has been a very disappointing and which means a lot of suffering for, for, for the civilians. The way to, to Damascus for us uh, is going from, uh, through Moscow. Uh, we want to convince the Russians that the best way to preserve their national interest uh, is to have a stable uh, government in Damascus, which means without Assad. All right, on that note, Ambassador Gérard Arrault, thank you for joining us from Washington. Thank you very much.